Denise Elisa Quadros. How are you feeling? About? Just in general, just in general, how are you feeling? How are you feeling here right now? This is the time of the year I like the most. This project became the project of my life, which is a project we do since 2013. It started really small with 50 homeless people, and nowadays we don't even know how many there are. Uh, could you tell us, uh, so I'm in, from the United States, we may not know very much about your story for where I'm from. Uh, yeah, I think it's very important though that we understand what you've gone through and what you're working on, what you've worked on in the past. If you could give us a little bit of information on that. I graduated in film. I was a producer for 15 years. My mother is an activist from the military dictatorship. She's a survivor, a teacher. Since I was small, I participated in social movements. I was president of some student groups. I never got involved in activism the way I am involved since 2013. So my life changed completely because of a sentimental reason as well, because the energy of 2013 was an energy that was overwhelming, of change and questioning. And after I was arrested in 2013, I was used as what we say in Brazil, body expiatorio, a scapegoat. So this changed my life completely because I was put in the main newspapers of Brazil. I was at the cover of Veja, a right-wing magazine, very famous but completely sensationalistic. I was in Fantastico a bunch of times. I was massacred. I had to leave the state three times because of threats from militia because of an occupation that was happening here at the city hall, which was Occupy City Hall, which started this whole project. And then I never stopped. I'm involved in all types of struggles involving human rights, always with the movements of homeless people. If there's anything, any movement happening in the favelas, I support it. I'm not from the favela, I don't live in a favela, I think it's really important to state that. I'm white, and I have my privileges, and this is also something that inside Brazilian activism, we try to deconstruct and to put that the white middle class has privileges, and we see more than half of the Brazilian population in misery and being assassinated by the police every day. And I start understanding myself as a human being, a Brazilian citizen, having the responsibility to fight for these struggles. Why do you think that you were specifically targeted for political persecution, for becoming a political prisoner? This is something I tried to analyze for many years, for seven years now. And I don't have really an explanation, I think, at least in my point of view, that 2013 had its movements of occupations. There was the Cabral occupation, which was from our governor, who's been arrested for many years already, his militia. And it was from these occupations that from within Brazilian politics and the municipal city halls in syndicates, the majority of our politicians are militia and assassins. So since we were very active in these occupations, which were the occupations that instigated these denunciations, against these robbers, these assassins. I was one of the ones picked. Brazil is a really conservative country, right? Sexist, homophobic, classist. So you have a white girl, middle class, and that way you can get a big chunk of activists to go against me. You can get this white girl, and then you can get the black movement to be against you, against me. 
and you take a straight girl, then the LGBT movement can come against me. And I also have a, a temper, I am very fierce, I fight with the police at the demos. I think it was revenge, a personal revenge of some politicians. And it was easy to criminalize for these reasons I told you, for being white. I think there were other candidates for this position. I got screwed in this one. Fuck me, fuck, fuck herself, fuck myself. Uh, how long were you in prison for? Oh, I was arrested twice in Bangu. Bangu 8. It's a prison, it's the biggest prison here in Rio. And it's considered one of the worst in Brazil. I was in six days and eleven days. And I was seven months clandestine. I received an arrest warrant with my face. It was a poster with my face on it, a wanted poster with a reward of 2,000 reais. And every Sunday on TV at Fantástico, this TV show, and in the newspapers, and so on. It was really difficult to go through this. It wasn't easy to go to Bangu prison, but it was much harder to stay seven months clandestine because all of Brazil knew me and I was hiding in cubicles. Um, so since being out of jail, what has your life been like? Are you still being... A hell. <laughs> hell? Are you still being persecuted? Are you still getting targeted by the state, by the police, any other groups or anything like that? Brazil has, well, inside Brazilian system. I'm not going to say peculiar because other Latin American countries also live with this. But in Brazil we have several powers. We have the militia, the police, the police, the militia, the media, the actual state with the judiciary. So I was persecuted from all sides. So when I was with habeas corpus, I was condemned to seven years in prison. So when I was in habeas corpus, the militia was pushing me out of the state with gun to my head. When I was at home, the media was putting my picture everywhere. So in these last seven years, the first four or five, I didn't have time to be me. I was this character, Sininho, Tinkerbell. How important are these types of events for organizing in the face of what seems to be a huge amount of, what seems to be like right-wing power in this country? Since Bolsonaro elected himself, elected himself, I didn't vote for him. I'm an anarchist, I don't vote. Since 2013, the activists live in attention of getting sued and, and so on. But it's different when a fascist, an assumed fascist like Trump, but the difference with Trump is that at least Trump is a businessman. He thinks something. He plans things out. Our thing is this. He doesn't think. He shits shit. He's a fascist. I don't know what's going on. A shit. Leonardo DiCaprio set fire to the Amazon. Greta is a brat. The natives made the price of meat rise. But on the other hand, aside from him being a shit, he's really powerful. Because he managed through the hate speech empower these people who these fascists that were there sleeping or were ashamed of being fascists, homophobics, and so on. And now it's totally out of control, this fascism and this hate speech. 
So you say you're an anarchist and you don't vote. So what is your general attitude about the establishment left and the and PT and the party? Like, do you see there's any way that these the establishment or anti-establishment left could ever come together? Is there any way that they can reconcile, or is that not something you're interested in? I'm gonna tell you a secret. <laughs> I didn't vote. But I try to get people to switch their votes. Yeah, so everywhere you see, I publicly and social media, I'm always campaigning against him, against Bolsonaro, against these fascists. During elections, I didn't know what to do. I thought I was going to get arrested and tortured and maybe assassinated. We thought a lot about whether we should stay here, what we were going to do. I was really scared, really. And I ended up campaigning a lot against him. But I didn't vote. Because I think the problem in Brazil is a problem of political system. And, yeah, not, not in Brazil. I think 2013 was also something that uh, made us question who represents us. This capitalist system, this new liberal system in the world, yes, and they're not going to make change, real change or a revolution. I think we need a revolution. And not just in Brazil, but in the world, in the whole world. You know, in the environmental question, uh, in the indigenous question, in all of Latin America. And that's it. I think poverty and the genocide only increases. And it's only going to continue increasing because the fascist power is also increasing a lot. And for me, I mean, I'm going to continue on the streets, although... Again, still not knowing what, much what to do, feeling a little lost. I think events like this are empowering. Okay. Okay.